17. 2 Peter 3, 17. Okay. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the errors of unprincipled men and fall from your steadfastness. Okay, this is the reason why I have this one because it, he is warning these people that he's talking to, Peter's warning them and saying, listen, you, don't be, don't be led astray in error as some men have fallen away from their steadfastness. This is the doctrine of apostasy, the falling away of those who once claimed faith. And like I said, it, it is debatable if those who are actually in the faith who fell away are saved and unsaved. And I think both and. I think there are some who fall away from the faith who aren't truly in the faith. And I think those who, and, and that's, I'm going I'm to get to that more when we talk about the assurance, um, the views of assurance of our, our salvation, which, yeah, we'll just get to that at a different time. But that's, what, that's one reason because I want to bring this scripture up. And Galatians 1 6. Galatians 1 6. It says this I am amazed. Paul is writing to the church of Galatia. And this is a church who's been established by Paul. And he is writing to them with genuine concern of, of amazement. In verse 6, that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel. Guess what? If you have a different gospel, then you do not have the true gospel. Okay? And these people had the gospel, but they're being, they're so quickly deserting. They're falling away. They're deserting it. They're, they're pushing it aside. And guess what it even says? Of him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel. So, this calling is is the word of God being pro, being proclaimed. I believe I believe that God calls by His word. The word of God is being proclaimed, and that is the calling of the grace of Christ. And guess what? These guys are deserting that calling. The, the, the gospel that they once hold to firmly, that they believe, they are quickly deserting it. And so the whole book of Galatians is him warning them not to. Who has bewitched you? And he's, he's warning them, warning them, warning them. And I think that that is something that we should probably take more seriously. I don't think there's enough warning sometimes to people who are living sinful lives and thinking that they're Christian. I don't think there's enough heeding the severity of God in I think there's more clings to promises and I think that's why they have the prosperity gospel that comes out. People love the promises of God. They love to cling to to good things but they do not like to answer to the consequences of their sin and they do not like to sometimes bend their knee to the stipulations that are required to inherit those promises. And so, and I think that's why we need to think soberly about this issue and not just emotionally or not just, well, this is how I feel. The Southern Baptist Convention has been teaching this or my group has been teaching this, whatever it is. Guys, we need to get freed from fear to, of holding to a doctrine just because someone has called it heresy in the 3rd or 4th century or or it seems like this has been traced back to however long generations or whatever. We need to let go of the fear of that and I think people put that fear on us and that's why I'm challenging you to think freely about these issues. I don't want you to be bound by theological barriers because you are discouraged from even reading people that disagree with you. As as y'all heard every when y'all listen to other episodes of Thinking Freely, as Aristotle said, it's the mark of an educated mind to entertain a thought 
without accepting it. Guys, it, it is a bad thing when we can have better conversations with unbelievers that don't agree with us and don't believe like us than some Christians in our own churches or other churches, which we're the ones that are supposed to have unity. I have more unity with some atheists sometimes at my workplace than I have when I, when I interact with other churches and other denominations. And that is not the unity that I believe Christ has prayed for in John 17 and the unity that we should be striving for as brothers and sisters in Christ. So just that is a warning that I, I think the Bible gives us and I am just bringing to your mem remembrance. So let's, let's all of us heed that warning humbly and cautiously.